We are catching up with the busiest man in futsal. And I'm not kidding when I say this. He's in the green room, and I can actually see him smiling. And we're, ta- we're trying to make sure that it's safe driving while he's going on and doing these kinds of things. Safe interviewing. We believe in that here at SDH. So without wasting any time, opening kickoff brought to us by our friends at Kickoff Coffee and kickoffcoffeeco.com. That's your QR code. For those of you watching on Twitch, don't forget, you go to Kickoff Coffee and kickoffcoffeeco.com. What you do, you use the code soccer down here 15. You get 15% off your purchase. They, in turn, take 10% reinvest it in Youth Games Youth Initiatives. Very, very cool stuff from our friends at Kickoff Coffee and kickoffcoffeeco.com. Time to take a breath. And now that means that we bring in from the green room, we go to Utica, New York, and we catch up with the man who is in charge of the U.S. men's futsal national team, Everton Moreira. Coach, thanks for coming on with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I, I love I love talking about soccer. I love talking about futsal. I love talking about football in general. Uh, thank you very much for having me in the morning show. All right. So the reason that we have you on is uh, it's an education for our, our listeners and our, and our viewers, but it is also because you are getting your passport stamped and probably another 15 or so folks in two days' time as the U.S. men's futsal national team is going to the CONCACAF Futsal Championships in Nicaragua. First and foremost, congrats. I know this is what the anticipated path is. How are you feeling going into Nicaragua? Uh, I, I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, I'm very confident. Uh, we, we've been doing uh, – um, we had three camps with the players, with the team, and every camp we can see them uh, progressively improved. Uh, offensively, defensively. Uh, our main goal first was to identify a core of players uh, to deal with us. And I think that was very, very quick for us to, to identify the core. Uh, the last uh, camp that we had in, in Argentina, we had uh, three games in there. The games were, it was good, uh, even better than, than what we expected, uh, the way how we compete. So I'm very, I'm very confident on this team, and I really believe uh, uh, this group that we're gonna, gonna get our job done. When it comes to getting a group together to make sure that you can accomplish the goals that you're chasing, what were you looking for in these individuals other than the idea that they have played together before? There might be some continuity. There might be some likeness and thought when it comes to okay i know what you want me to do when i do this and this and this what were you looking for in those individuals that you're taking with you to nicaragua uh we um we have an interesting uh uh group part of the players uh play for masl the major arena soccer league in the united states and you know they're professional they they they're used to to being professional, they used to uh, 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 a lot of people watching them with pressure, but it's still a different sport. It's still, it's still arena soccer, and we have few players that play uh, first division and second division in Italy, uh, futsal, which obviously they also are familiar to to the game, but they also are professional, and we have uh, other players. They're very, very good soccer players. And they're very good futsal players, but they're not necessarily right now playing uh, professional in the United States. So it's, it's, a, it's a big mix. So what I was trying to do, what I tried to do at my first uh, uh, camp is to get, uh, I, I couldn't reinvent the wheel. Uh, the, the, the last, the last uh, cycle that they had, they, they finished the cycle with a group of players, with the poor. I, all I could do is to continue to have some of that play that, you know, those players and infuse and implement some players that I believe that would do well for us and end up mashing really well, surprisingly well at at first try. That's, that's, that normally doesn't happen that easy, uh, but it matched really well. So I was fortunate for that to happen. And I, I was just looking for players that one, understand that going to CONCACAF we're going to be playing against national teams that have uh, uh, professional programs in their country of futsal, so they're more familiar with playing futsal. So we have to understand that sometimes you're going to get stuck defensively, so we have to defend well. Uh, and we have to have fast... Hello? Yep, you're with me. You're good. Sorry. Uh, and, and we're going to have to have uh, fast transitions uh, going forward. 
we have to understand uh, that sometimes we're going to have to learn uh, how to how to suffer defensively. So I was looking for for a group of players that can be strong offensively, defensively, technical ability, but also mentally, because the mental game is going to be extremely important in that competition. You became head coach last September. What has this experience been like for you to represent the United States in international competition? And what have you learned about yourself as a person and as a coach with this experience? Uh, first of all, it's, a, it's an honor. It's a, it's, a, it's a privilege for me to be, to be, you know, being part of the national team, to be to be representing the United States. So it's an honor for me just, just to be that. I learned a few things about myself. I learned that uh, I actually can't multitask. I, <laughs> I, I wasn't quite, quite sure about that prior to it. Uh, I, I learned that I have to be always uh, very organized with my agenda, uh, but it gives me an extra experience or because you know like i said i, I my my full-time job uh it's right here with uh utica city fc in new york but you know being with the national team with futsal there's uh, the u.s soccer federation they're so professional that helps me to become to learn more to become even more professional towards to my full-time job here and, and vice versa you know like it, it helps me with the with the with my job in utica city fc it helps me to bring a little bit of experience my, with my, my coaching style all year round and my indoor soccer as well, the way how I, how I see the game. So uh, right now I can, say, I can say that both sports, both, both sports are complementing each other and help me to just uh, to become a better, a better coach. You know, I, I always say that to my players and my my job in the national team or in my or in my club is not to become the best coach in the world. I, I'm not here for that. Uh, I'm trying to to accomplish objectives. I'm trying to accomplish goals, and my goal right now is to focus on uh, qualifying to the to the World Cup. And and you know, like it's been 20 years since the United States have won Concacaf. So obviously, my my second objective is to is to win the World Cup to to win the the, the Concacaf. The, the, the qualifiers and, and bring back the trophy that has not been in the United States for the past 20 years. Everton Moretta, head coach of the U.S. men's football national team. They're getting ready for the CONCACAF championships. He's flying out this weekend. He's going to Nicaragua. That's why he's catching up with us from Utica, New York, going under underpasses on freeways and doing safe <laughs> interviewing here this morning on the morning show. When it comes to CONCACAF and futsal as a sport, how tough is it for the United States to navigate CONCACAF as, you know, as a futsal competition? How tough is futsal in CONCACAF? It, it, it is tough. There is a couple good national teams in there. You know, uh, Costa Rica is the most active uh, group in there. The Costa Rica is the most active. They, they you know, they have the, a professional program in there. A lot of players play in Europe as well. Uh, Guatemala, they have they have uh, a, a good national team that is a that's a you know they have like a big history with uh, with Concacaf, uh, Panama as well, uh, you know Canada in the past had had some some success. It's a, it's a tough competition, uh, you know. It, like I said before, it's always it's always uh, tough when you go uh, from uh, uh, between sports. You know, like we don't we don't have a a full team right now that plays that plays futsal, but we do have uh, amazing players, amazing individuals. So our goal is just to make sure that they gel together and play very well as a group. But it's a tough competition. But I know that we've been doing a great job, and we're going to be a tough competitors as well. How difficult a transition is it for an arena soccer player to grasp? The differences in futsal and succeed in futsal. How different is it? It it, it is a small size game, which that helps definitely. You know, uh, to play both games. I always say in arena soccer that it's easier uh, for a futsal player to adapt to play arena soccer than an outdoor soccer player to adapt 
to play arena soccer because the the, the size of the game, because uh, how quick, how fast uh, the arena soccer it's played as well. But I am very fortunate that those players that play arena soccer, they are coming with us to the national team. They are former futsal players as well, so that they absolutely help. Uh, all the players that play arena soccer that come to the national team, at some point, they also played futsal in a very high level. So it's uh, it, you just have to you just have to adapt. Uh, we I I didn't have a lot of time to adapt. You know, like you only have like a few months. But I I never have excuses in my life. I, I like to have I like challenges and I embrace them. And those players that they have like a very very big personality. Uh, so I, I think they, they will adapt extremely well for the futsal game. So then let me ask you this. For individuals that are used to playing the outdoor game, what would you tell them about what playing futsal could do to help them round their game out or even add to their game outdoors? What, what would futsal do for outdoor specific players, you think? Obviously, what I'm going to say is going to sound extremely biased, right? <laughs> uh, just because I am a football player, you know, I, I, I'm originally uh, from Brazil, and you know, I, I when I when I start to play uh, soccer back in Brazil, uh, you don't start to play outdoor soccer until 12, 13 years old. Before that, is all it's all futsal. Uh, futsal help outdoor soccer players for multiple things. Uh, it, it helps you with with your touch. You know, it's a small size uh, game. You have to make sure that your touch is good, otherwise you're going to lose the ball possession. It helps you with uh, um, how much of a high pressure uh, you're going to be able to deal with. You know, like a, a player's pressure in you, you're not going to feel the pressure with the ball. Uh, the way how you think, you know, uh, it's quicker think. Uh, you know, obviously, it's a, it's, it's a lot of cognitive work involved with futsal. So a, a youth soccer player, especially uh, growing up, if a player can start with playing futsal or playing futsal at the same time as, as soccer, it, it helps a lot. Uh, just uh, as example, uh, if you have a defender and outdoor soccer, the defender, he doesn't get involved a lot with the ball all the time, right? But a defender in futsal, which we name Fixo, he needs to know how to play. He needs to know how to pass the ball, how to receive, how to move in between lines and all this stuff. So you get a kid that be playing defensively in futsal for a long time and you add this player in an outdoor, you're going to become an amazing defender. You're going to become a defender that not only can disarm the opponent's team, but he also is going to be a threat to a threat with the ball. So futsal add a lot, you know, one of you one, how to break lines, how to how to play, you know, inside of the midfield again. You know, I'm passionate, passionate about the sport, so I'm extremely biased. But I can see uh, so much of the benefit um, in futsal for an outdoor player. And like I always said, uh, for me, uh, clubs should implement futsal at a young age. And if they did that, it would be extremely smart to form better players, better technical players, because in the United States, we already have the physicality. We already have the kids with a lot of desire of playing. And we have talent. But now you add futsal, you're going to add the technical ability that they need. Coach, good luck at practice this morning. May the flight to Nicaragua on Sunday get everyone there in one piece. You've got a week to train before everything kicks off April 13th in Managua, Nicaragua for the CONCACAF Futsal Championships. Good luck. Get that, uh, get that title for the United States. Get as deep as you can. Looking forward to seeing how things go in Nicaragua. Thanks for hanging out with us on the morning show. Good luck at practice. Good luck in Nicaragua. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And we're going to be fighting hard uh, to bring the, the trophy back.